Hi there, and welcome to Israel Explained, the last Vegas episode of Israel Explained with Shail Ben Frame. Today we're going to be talking about a um, crisis of confidence between Netanyahu and the Biden administration that is starting to have some serious ramifications for the um, conclusion of this war. So, today Netanyahu gave a press conference that was... Um, somewhat problematic. He said there can be no elections until the end of the war, yet the war must go on for the foreseeable future in order to guarantee the security of Israel. So Netanyahu was saying this war will go on for a foreseeable future, and his tenure as prime minister with this Knesset and this government um, will also go on for the, for the foreseeable future. That is something that um, is bad news for the Biden administration. The Biden administration does not want to hear. They increasingly feel that the Netanyahu government is difficult to work with. Perhaps the main point of contention is the lack of a vision for the day after the war. Netanyahu says the day after the war is the day after Hamas is beaten, and therefore there's no need to discuss it now. But... On the ground in Gaza, we're seeing something completely different. Rafah remains under control of Hamas. We know that. There's been a lot of talk about Israel moving in there. It hasn't happened yet. But there have been some developments elsewhere that are just as concerning. Israel at one point had five divisions in Gaza. Now it has somewhere between two and three divisions. It's somewhere below three divisions. And we're really seeing the difference in how closely controlled Gaza is. Um, the most immediate symptom Israelis are feeling are the rockets that are being fired at them from everywhere that Israel withdraws. We also saw some amazing picture coming out of Gaza today. Um, Hamas police were retaking their positions, retaking um, order in the city. Hamas was bringing aid trucks into Gaza City in order to distribute in the markets. And because Israel has made no effort to control Gaza City and run it um, for the civilians, Hamas is being allowed to come back in. This seems to be the road to a day after that is run by um, Hamas. Um, and people in Israel are losing patience and losing trust in the administration as well. It's not just the Americans. Gadi Eisenkot, who's a uh, minister in the cabinet, part of Gantz's party, who lost his son and his nephew in the operation in Gaza, gave a interview on um, on Channel 12 on Uvda. He said he said he doesn't necessarily trust Netanyahu, though he trusts the cabinet. He also said it's necessary within a period of months to return the Israeli voter to the polls and hold elections in order to renew trust because right now there is no trust. In his speech, Netanyahu replied to that, at least indirectly, saying, quote, the people who want elections now most are Hamas. Um, meanwhile, Defense Minister Gallant is saying that Israel is getting closer to a war with Lebanon, which doesn't inspire anyone with confidence considering that Israel doesn't have an exit strategy for Gaza. So going into a war it would be much more complex to exit from, certainly doesn't seem um, promising. So watching all this, the Biden administration feels increasingly that Netanyahu is an untrustworthy partner and that Netanyahu is an inept partner in terms of getting the kind of policy results that they would like to see in uh, Gaza. The latest, most stinging move that Netanyahu made towards the Americans was rejecting a proposal where the Saudis would rebuild Gaza and normalize relations with Israel if Jerusalem agreed to create a pathway for an eventual Palestinian state. When that was rejected, what that did is it took the entire American diplomatic move um, to try to resolve the Gaza war and threw it out without offering any kind of replacement. This is putting the Americans in a very difficult position where they've bet their credibility 
on the Israeli war effort, but no longer trust that the government can bring that war effort to the conclusion that they want. So NBC released a story yesterday where, according to them, one of Biden's officials said that they're looking at, quote, the day after Netanyahu, which is, of course, kind of a cruel way of putting it, considering Netanyahu isn't going to have a day after in Gaza. Of course, Netanyahu heard all about that and was enraged. And in his speech to the Israeli media, he said, quote, those who speak of a day after Netanyahu are speaking of creating a Palestinian state with the Palestinian Authority. He also added that Israel has to have security control over all the territory west of the Jordan in any future agreement, which kind of uh, evoked the from the river to the sea, the Palestinians often um, like to say. Biden hasn't responded to any of this directly, but the State Department has. So State Department uh, spokesperson Matthew Miller said about Netanyahu's refusal to consider a Palestinian state, quote, there is no way to solve Israel's long-term challenges to provide lasting security, and there is no way to solve the short-term challenges of rebuilding Gaza, of establishing governance in Gaza, and providing security for Gaza without the establishment of a Palestinian state. He also added in a rebuke um, to Netanyahu, for the first time in its history, you see the countries in the region who are ready to step up and further integrate with Israel and provide real security assurances to Israel. And the United States is ready to play its part too. But they all have to have a willing partner on the other side. There is a historic opportunity that Israel has to deal with, and we hope the country will take that opportunity. So you can see the position there is almost, there is an Arab partner. There are people willing to take up this mantle. And Israel is the obstacle. It's not really that simple, of course. In reality, the Palestinian Authority is also a very serious obstacle and doesn't necessarily want to go along with the um, American plan. But it's very easy for them to hide behind Israel and say that Israel is saying no. And it's a shame that Israel is giving them the cover they need to avoid um, the reforms that Israel wants them to have. Israel should be the forefront of pressuring the PA, not at the forefront of letting the PA off the hook, which is what they're doing right now. Uh, but Netanyahu said it's the job of an Israeli prime minister to be able to say no to the Americans when necessary and say yes when possible. Of course, the Americans would reply that he very rarely says yes and only does so very grudgingly. The consensus in the Biden administration, and among a lot of Israelis too, is that Netanyahu is determined to draw this war out as much as possible to stay in office. And that's why there's no real uh, plan to end it. Uh, some American officials also voiced concerns that he's not putting the welfare of the hostages first, but rather he's putting his political um, interests first. So this is turning into a problem electorally for Biden. And it's creating a wedge between the U.S. and the Arab states. These are two things that Biden really can't afford at this moment. Um, he's trying to create a coalition against Iran, which is um, going against American interests everywhere. And he's in an election year. And going into war is problematic on two levels. The left accuses him of committing genocide and all that. And the right will accuse him of not going hard enough on Iran. He would really rather not be in this position by then. So what does he do? Well, according to the NBC report, Biden's been getting advice from several quarters to say that he's lost trust in Netanyahu, but to say instead he has the utmost faith in the people of Israel and the state of Israel. Now, if you remember the, um, the Obama administration, Obama tried to do something similar with Netanyahu. He went to Israel and gave a speech to Israeli students trying to appeal to them over the head of Netanyahu. That doesn't really work, and I don't think it'll work right now. Despite the fact there's a lot of resentment towards Netanyahu, he's still the Israeli elected leader. You're not going to be able to work um, around him. They, they've they been trying to do so anyway. NBC reported that Blinken is, trying to, is talking to the Saudis and the UAE directly about the future of Gaza without consulting Israel, because Israel is just vetoing everything and not participating in the process. But it's also discussing these plans with Yair Lapid, who's the head of the opposition, and several members of the cabinet who are unnamed. I would be very surprised if Gadi Eisenkot, who 
was talking about why there need to be elections right now wasn't one of those, and his comments may actually be um, be linked to that. Okay. Um, other people in the administration are saying to take a less confrontational road with Israel and to dangle the carrot of Saudi normalization more. But the truth is the U.S. has already done that, and it really doesn't hear that um, Netanyahu cares enough about Saudi normalization, um, especially in comparison to um, the threats to his coalition, which seem to be his main concern, unfortunately. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Biden administration takes this confrontation to the next level and starts talking about what happens when Netanyahu is gone, the day after Netanyahu, which will only cause Netanyahu to stiffen his back further and will, of course, hamper the war effort because it's American support for Israel that provides Israel with a lot of its backing and strength vis-a-vis -vis Iran, and that's something that Israel should not be jeopardizing. So a lot to look at here and very bad signs of a split between Biden and Netanyahu, where so far been, Biden has tried to keep close to Netanyahu to give him sort of a bear hug um, and work together, trying to change his policy through friendship and not through confrontation. Okay, um, let's look at some questions that we got last time. Sunny LaBeouf asked, no one has ever accused me of being an optimist, but it seems like we are inching towards that worst case scenario you talked about. Do you realistically see Netanyahu being unseated? I feel like his corrupt and venal Likud ministers, whose careers are also on the line, will not abandon him no matter what. Okay, so in the previous episode, I was asked what's the um, worst case scenario, and I gave a very bad one where Israel is taking over a lot of territory without any political solution, like the PA collapses, Gaza has no political solution, Israel's in Lebanon. And uh, it's controlling more Arabs than Jews. And slowly that begins to undermine its legitimacy and its ability to rule. And it's Becky from the United States. So, so I don't think the worst case scenario is actually going to happen. That's just a worst case scenario. I think Israel will manage probably to keep the PA alive, eventually do the right thing in Gaza. I don't think Israel's going to commit suicide. As for Netanyahu, um, yeah, I think he, there is a realistic uh, road for him to being unseated. As he makes more and more mistakes, becomes less and less popular, uh, some Likud members may want to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. Is it likely? No, but I could, I could see it happening in a couple of months or so, especially if he keeps making mistakes like today with the medicine and things like that. That was a very, very bad call on his part. Uh, Hario Super asks, I just read a news piece that quoted the Saudis saying that they are still willing to normalize relations with Israel. I was wondering if there's any significance in the timing of this coming out and would love to get your opinion on whether a deal with the Saudis may lead to ending this war with a stalemate. The deal may include allowing Hamas leadership to flee and remaining hostages released, but with the Saudis recognizing Israel. If this ever came to fruition, would that be a net positive for Netanyahu, even if the war aims haven't been met? So I kind of answered this during the video. I would say absolutely not. This is not something that Netanyahu wants enough to give up his other interests. And why is that? Well, if Netanyahu gives a two-state horizon, he's concerned he'll lose the support of Smotrich, Ben Gvir, and several members um, of the Likud. If the war ends, he's concerned that he'll be ousted and there will be elections. I don't think he actually believes that Saudi normalization is enough of an achievement to bring to the Israeli electorate and win after all of the problems that he's caused. And I think that's probably correct. Um, what else? Ch -ch -ch -ch. I still don't understand why it hasn't become obvious. This is from FRDZ4KB. Still don't understand why it hasn't become obvious to everyone in Israel that the war goal of destroying Hamas is unreachable at least with the approach the government has taken. Israel won't be given until 2025. That's just bananas. Sooner, sooner rather than later, the humanitarian toll in Gaza will be too much, even for the few staunch allies Israel still has. Um, I would argue in part because of the strategy of the IDF. Uh, you can't support 2.5 million people living in a wasteland while the war is going on. 
uh, etc., etc., etc. So if you can't realize either your stated war goals, defeating Hamas or rescue hostages, is it a time to negotiate, even if there are only bad deals available? That's just the way it is. Um, as for escalating the war to Lebanon, what makes you think anyone in Israel would get better results than the war in Gaza? You destroy lots of shit, kill lots of civilians, the world gets even madder at Israel, the economy tanks even more, and you won't be able to strategically defeat Hezbollah any more than Hamas. Well, that's a very dismal way of looking at things, but th th there's a lot of truth to that. Israel can't just keep invading everyone, fighting everyone, without having some kind of diplomatic horizon. And if it doesn't have that, it will ultimately lose its support. Um, so I wouldn't put things quite as critically as you do, but yeah, you, you, you point out a lot of issues that, that Israel has. Um, Israel should be pressing its military advantage to get some kind of deal, because when it's on the ascendant militarily, it'll get a better deal than when it doesn't. Uh, Will Struk uh, said, I used to think Israel lost the 2006 war. That's the one in Lebanon, the second one. But over time, my views have changed, and they damaged Hezbollah worse than we understood at the time. Now, this isn't a question, but it's a very good comment. It's thing that I think about often in regards to this war. In 2006, the war went worse than the war is going in Gaza right now, or at least it seemed so at the time. There were a lot of disasters, and it didn't look like the aims were achieved at all. But Hezbollah was deterred for a long time, still you could say deterred now even, to some extent, from pursuing full-out war with Israel. So it could be, but while this war is not going particularly well for Israel and Gaza, the amount of destruction it's causing there will deter them for a while. And I think that's true. But that just means that when the deterrence runs off, there will be another war. It could take 10 years, could take 20 years. The idea of a diplomatic solution is to make sure that even after that, the wars don't return. That's the idea. But I think you're right in what you're implying here, that the Israeli military operation may be more successful than it seems. It certainly would be nice to think that. Um... Island Fox says, the idea of going on an all-out war with Hezbollah at this stage is not only idiotic, but borderline suicidal. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so it's... Unlike everyone else in the world, the Israeli government cannot even see this as an available option to negotiate. The ground operations in Gaza were pretty unsuccessful and not surgical at all. That's being very charitable. The only upper hand IDF has gotten Gaza are the airstrikes, and those two were indiscriminate and came at the cost of thousands of human lives. Um, so I, I have to disagree that the, the war in Gaza, militarily speaking, has been such a disaster. I mean, keep in mind that the IDF has dismantled the vast majority of the Hamas battalions, probably around 17, 18 out of the 25 that they have. And if Israel went into Rafah, they'd be able to dismantle more. The trouble is, as I keep saying, just a military solution is not going to do it. You have to leverage those military successes into diplomatic successes. And that's exactly what the United States is trying to do for Israel now. Um, they're doing a lot of diplomatic dirty work for Israel, and Israel keeps turning them down, and that brings us back to the topic of the crisis that's starting to develop between Netanyahu and Biden. So we'll be following that closely. I hope that both countries um, walk off the ledge and don't start confronting each other publicly. Anyway, see you here on the next episode.